In this video, we'll illustrate why it's important to understand the precision with which MATLAB performs calculations. By default, MATLAB uses 16 digits of precision for numbers, regardless of the format that's displayed in the command window, as we discussed in the previous video. Getting close to this precision limit can be problematic. Let me show you an example. We'll set the format to long, and we'll create a variable a that's equal to 1 plus 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And MATLAB correctly tells us the value of that variable a. Now if we subtract 1 from this, we might expect to get 1 times 10 to the minus 14. In fact, we get something very close to 1 times 10 to the minus 14, but that's slightly off. We get 9.99 something times 10 to the minus 15. This is because MATLAB is being asked to determine a very small difference between two numbers that are both close to 1. a is close to 1 and 1 is 1. And the difference between them is extremely small. That difference is so small that it's close enough to MATLAB's precision limit that MATLAB can't compute it exactly. To illustrate what happens if we go beyond the 16 digits of precision, consider the variable c that's 1 plus 1 times 10 to the minus 16. So these two numbers are 16 orders of magnitude apart, and MATLAB can't tell the difference between them. When we add 10 to the minus 16 to 1, MATLAB tells us that the answer is 1. And if we subtract 1 from this number, we don't get 10 to the minus 16, or even something close to 10 to the minus 16, we get 0. The number is exactly 0. And the reason is because 10 to the minus 16 that we're adding to the 1 here is so small that it's below the limit of MATLAB to distinguish the difference. Next we'll review some notation that MATLAB uses for assigning vectors and matrices. Remember that vectors are going to be assigned using square brackets with spaces delimiting columns. If we want to convert this row vector v to a column vector, we can take its transpose by using the apostrophe. We could also have assigned it that way in the first place. The semicolon delimits rows in MATLAB. So we can assign it this way, or this way with the semicolon. By combining spaces and semicolons, we can also prepare matrices in MATLAB. Again, the spaces delimit the columns and the semicolons delimit the rows. It'll frequently be useful for us to pre-allocate matrices, and we can do that using commands like ones, zeros, and i. The ones command takes two arguments, a number of rows and a number of columns. If I create a matrix containing one row and three columns using the ones command, it looks like this, or alternatively, two rows and three columns. We can do something similar with the zeros command. If we want to create a square matrix that's the identity matrix, we can use the i command. EYE -E creates the identity matrix. A fast way to assign linearly spaced vectors is to use the semicolon. The semicolon is used to delimit ranges. The semicolon creates a vector that begins with 0, ends with 6, and is incremented by 2's. If we want to count by 5's to 25, again we can use the semicolons. The same type of vector can be created using what's called the linspace command. The linspace command takes three arguments a starting value, an ending value, and a number of values to include in the vector. So this creates a vector containing the numbers from 0 to 25 
and it creates six values in the vector. This will create a column vector containing numbers from 0 to 10 with four evenly spaced numbers in the vector. If instead we want to create logarithmically spaced data, we can use the log space command. The first two arguments of the log space command are the powers of tend for the first value and the last value in the vector. The first value is 10 to the 1, and the last value is 10 to the 2, and we've asked MATLAB to logarithmically space six values over that range. Remember that when using the log space command, if you enter negative numbers for the limits, then those will be values less than 1. So 10 to the minus 1 is 0.1, 10 to the 2 is 100, and I have six logarithmically spaced values in between. In the next video, we'll review some matrix operations.